Dear colleagues, we perhaps can proceed if we have time. If we are limited by time, maybe we should start. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to see you all here. So, so happy to see you alive and kicking. We, we can not only, not only survive the epidemics, but we can survive everything. So within the framework of our symposium, we have an idea um, to, to make a round table and um, a round table discussion and discuss these things, the things that uh, in the last couple of years um, more or less surfaced um, as a possible uh, further step of uh, developing the tooling. The question is how we can use uh, what is uh, here in test SEM and the methodology of it, how we can help teachers, how we can help students uh, to uh, get rid of the of the problems that get identified as a result of testing to maintain positive trajectory. Uh, that is necessary for successful school school life and in that in that sense we have a good chance of uh, good chance to discuss the ideas that we could suggest one way or another to be included uh, to the framework uh, uh, of our uh, inner uh, national cooperation. Mm. Now we have a final events ongoing uh, in terms of uh, arranging documents, and we can discuss what could have possibly, what could possibly be done among us, our collective. What perspective, ways we see of using some uh, instruments and tools and uh, see how we can, what we can do in terms of uh, uh, cooperation. I would like to turn the floor over to Pyotr Gennadievich. We spoke earlier that Pyotr Gennadievich can make a talk about just what the steps could be on using same instruments after testing and what by using SEM methodology, what can be said that is useful to students, to teachers, and what can be done as a result of testing. So, Gennadievich, I would like to turn the floor over to you. I downloaded the presentation, now I'll try to to demonstrate it, is it the right way that I'm doing it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. If it's okay. So I, I will start uh, from Sam itself. Uh, we uh, we have a uh, work with Sam. Uh, the model the model itself is uh, has already been approved, and the first uh, research attempts were made to prove it's operational, yeah, both theoretically and experimentally. But uh, basically, now we have the same tasks in front of us. The test is very big, and for Diagnostics. That the first uh, diagnostic requirement is it should, shouldn't be uh, too uh, resource con consuming, too labor consuming. We we have to be moving in that direction, and we have to understand what we should uh, sacrifice in terms of precision. Because what's important is what group the, point, the kid pertains to. But within one group, it's not so important just who overcame whom. Uh, so we have to make this test diagnostic. These steps are important for us, not the fluctuations within them. And so we have a chance that way to make the test more compact, less uh, labor demanding, and uh, 
we can work out the criteria where in every test we can make a uh, same scale. There's a test that already exists and we can find the line of tasks of different levels and uh, create the scale inside. So here we have, uh, uh, we, we need the uh, psychometrics uh, help. Shukulag has left us and that's really bad. He is a great person, great specialist, but uh, what we have, we, we can use what we have and nothing else. Mm. Uh, we don't uh, uh, we we don't hold to particular parameters. I'm a psychometrics and it's very really difficult for me to uh, uh, evaluate the, the consequences. So this is uh, this is what uh, uh, is what concerns us. But we created it not uh, just for ourselves, but within the framework of management and perfection of the educational process. So our first step uh, was directed towards uh, improving, uh, improving this educational content. So in, in it, we chose a link uh, where um, intrusion can be useful when we move from the beginning of school to the main to the main school from elementary to uh, junior and junior high uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, transition is considered problematic in almost all research there is a decrease of performance and negative symptoms so the external factors of problem we see, these are unknown, unknown world. This is an un unknown world. These are unknown teachers. There's, there's programs that can soften these things, but there's inner factors of problem we see, that the, the individual uh, difference in, term, in terms of uh, mastering the program, uh, at, the, at the end, at the end of the elementary school, some kids, there's a group of kids that are not able to uh, master the, the, the junior program. Uh, and uh, we cannot do anything in, in, in terms of this space. We, there's different approaches. One, one approach, the main approach is that every kid uh, is uh, has his his own temp and, and he can be, uh, uh, it can be supported the living kid for the second year but the minus the minus of this system is uh, wasting one year it's a lot uh, and then uh, uh, and then the break with with his contemporaries the psychologists psychologists do not understand uh, the importance of him being with his, his contemporaries uh, a differentiated approach uh, on the level of, of beginning school education is not just anything it's just the level uh, that everyone's supposed to get everyone's supposed to, to get every member of the community. And we differentiated the approach that the class is destroyed and not even talking about load for the teacher. So this approach that of course exists is to work with the class as, as a whole, trying to help those uh, who are behind to, to become part of it. Uh, so this uh, uh, really decreases the amount of negative in the fifth and sixth uh, grades. So how do we solve it? Uh, we have tutorship, we have at the beginning of the first uh, and the elementary and the middle school. So what we 
try to do, we try to get this idea, we try to use this idea, but we use it for the whole class. Yeah. And we think that we uh, think that we should uh, improve the traditional uh, uh, the traditional link of the educational process. And some things are mentioned well in, gen in didactics, but when, when it comes to practical implementation, it all becomes kind of stale and it begins to look like a, a reminder rather than advice. So what we're suggesting, we, we, should, we should really uh, look from, from a different uh, point of view. You have to make a model where the whole uh, elementary school course is, uh, is uh, put out and uh, based on the Wingstein principle, uh, repeating without repeating. And it should look uh, new to the kid. And here I will turn the floor over to Sergei Fyodorovich. Uh, and uh, and he did that. Uh, uh, and uh, he will tell us what uh, what situation it is in. All right. The idea of this model is this. Unfortunately, uh, uh, learning for a kid, especially learning in mathematics, uh, usually is considered a very, very unknown world. So the main idea this module, as Peter has already said, that is the repetition of the elementary school. I know the basic terms that were formed there, but that not just a repetition, that's also the possibility to take a look at them from another point of view. So that is the ways you solve it. If you are talking about the math, that's the further formalization of it. And sometimes children are being told of like how to do it, but we don't explain to them why we do it. So sometimes the definitions already include some you know, tools of how to do something, but we exclude the very idea of doing something. So in some sense, maths, which is not really being thought of well, it's not also why, but it's what for. And what for allows you to answer to the question why. So how and why. So why would we do this? So why would we do this or that? The example is quite simple here. We would take a simple term like what is a perimeter? That is the sum of the sides of um, a certain figure. So here you have the way to calculate it. But what is a perimeter? That stands beyond your understanding. But actually, that is the line that actually makes the borders, you know, for it. And we're talking about this length. And as far as it comprises several lines, which have the same certain length, then it would be the sum of it. So actually, we do highlight this how issue, but not why, not what for. This what for question is an important thing to understand that will allow a child to use and to apply its knowledge. So that you know that knowledge wouldn't be just something learned, it wouldn't be just an algorithm, but that it would be a way to find a solution for a certain problem. So that is a goal-reaching approach.
The definitions should be like the way of solving a problem. That's what the module is oriented to. So we are working on the basis of the material that we have already studied, and we are using another point of view. Like, what do we learn by answering to this question? So that's how we view our module. That's how we introduce the material and the analysis of the modules. How do we model this or that situation? And their idea is as follows. I would like to show you several pages. I think uh, I should need a new presentation here. Why well, can't switch this one off and show it? So how do I demonstrate the screen? How do I share it? Yes, you just simply open the other file. Exactly. Ясно. Другая, понял. Word. Mm, so now we launch the word. So now you share the screen and you choose the word application. So when you do it, you have the list of the windows that are open. Теперь видно? Да, да. Do you see it now? Ну, я проведу. Я почему не сделал презентации, потому что... Why didn't I include it into the presentation? Значит, ну вот это как бы структура модуля. That is kind of a structure of the module, considering in contents, with the red arrows showing the repetition of what has been done. With starting the new points, something that we have learned from the first school year. You know, I don't know how that works in other countries, but in Russia, the first six months are kind of the fifth year are dedicated to the repetition of uh, the elementary school. And then we start the positive and negative um, fractures and positioned and decimals that comprises the usual fifth and sixth year at school. So that's how we represent what is the place of this module in the situation. So are there any other questions here? So I have told about it. And if you have any questions, I am open to answer to them. So I think that that is the technology of such modules running. So how do would the teachers know what to do? How can it be organized really? So the material that I have been doing, I have been preparing, actually includes three or four parts. I didn't, you know, divide them. So I had just several colors used. That is both for a teacher and for a student. So that is uh, the reflectional issue. 
So that is the comments on the problems. So that is very productive both for a student and for a teacher. So that's how we manage it. So this is the material of three different types that is used here. So you didn't actually divide it into three um, booklets. So you have a problem and you know you have a comment for it. Then you insert the text. And that's quite convenient. Yes, exactly. And what's also important here but I think that this module can't be transferred into every country. It must be adjusted to each country's situation. That's what we call localized. I think that's a quite of importance. So if we have the solution to use them somehow, then you should localize it actually. And considering it, we may add something or get rid of something. Like today, the module has some key descriptions of some key aspects. But in order to do it and to use it, you should add some new exercises or some other issues. So that's what it looks like right now. So I would also like to ask you on the technology of how it can be used and applied. So maybe that's the question to Dmitry. So if you could use that module in the school with the fifth year class where a teacher gets some additional job and work to be done. As far as I said, well, you know, here in Russia, the situation is as follows. First half year is just the repetition of the elementary school program. And in that sense, no new real additions to the program that they have already studied is not necessary. So the module actually covers this program. And it doesn't go beyond its limits. Do the teachers need to do a lot of studying so that they would take this module and incorporate it into the lesson plans for the first six months? Frankly speaking, it's quite a complicated question to answer as far as that requires for the discussions with teachers. Yes, it's quite a special moment. It also depends on the teachers, of course, on how ready they are. I think that it might be uh, during a short seminar. How can you really assess this additional a load this additional work considering the introduction of this module to the first six months of the fifth school year. Well, I suppose that there are no additional hours, so the module must be somehow incorporated into the current program. It can be replaced by certain material from it. So, you know, no additional hours or lessons should be added. If we don't take additional hours, we stay within the volume of the school hours that had been defined by the school program, exactly. 
but we still change what we are going to do within this program. So how far does this construction go from the usual traditional program? So that means that we don't use something that we used to. Yes, that is the modus of the presentation has been changed. It's modified, it's presented. So the idea is to actualize and you know to make people remember the understanding basis. As far as you know, formal approach doesn't work like that. Once you've understood the algorithm, you understand it and you use it, but you forget actually the basis on which the algorithm is being built. And then the following thing happens. So he sees the limits of its application. And then, you know, uh, he stops using it really. So while he's working within the limits of the algorithm working, but if we are talking about the new situation where you must pass to the other algorithm, you still work within the old one. As far as you have forgotten the source and the basis. So the idea is, you know, to make them remember these terms, the definitions, the scientific basis, and actually create the basis so that you could move forward as far as this transition to new topics in sixth and sixth class, they are quite problematic while studying. And one of the modules ideas is to create a good basis for this passage. So we are talking actually about certain work with teachers of the fifth grade so that they were receiving these children would understand the deficits that they had during the testing or that is just the module that you know is good for everyone like you have passed the test with excellent results and those who have shown simply satisfactory results so this remedy is for whom? I see what you mean. So, I suppose that I would mostly say that we are talking about various components here. So we are talking with larger and prolonged actions that would be the approach for the worst students. But if we strengthen the modular understanding, then we're talking about the advanced students and of the medium level ones. So actually that is the issue of which side you consider to be the more important one. So the some testing results and the class orientation might show the teacher how to choose the work. Yes, because some actually highlight the following. There are people that work or considering formal approaches. There are people that start getting into it. So that is second level. So SAM testing is actually designed to, to find these people. That's why it gives you the basis for moving. So our major goal, if we're talking about the SAM, is to pass the child from the first level to the second level. The third level is kind of more advanced one and this goal is not applicable to it but considering the second level it does and the passage to the second level in some sense allows us 
to uh, do the forecasts and the child would be successful in uh, the uh, senior grades in school, in high school. I would like to add just two simple things like the deficits of understanding make a, um, a complicated thing to be evaluated. So there are advanced and medium level students still lack some knowledge that might be different. So that is kind of the adjustment to the system for those who rebuild the system. And yes, that's what we hope for. So when I was, you know, studying the program, and that is the development program, I, as a grown-up person, understood that I didn't understand arithmetics really well. And I, you know, finalized my understanding of certain issues. Like I felt uh, that I something was wrong in some aspects. So such huge problems can be solved at once. So these iterations are important. Like we come back to basics and then the whole system is being rebuilt. So this iteration is necessary. Like you have been working for four years without, you know, serious backups. And now when you have all the material gathered, which is quite autonomous, you need to come back so that to shake it and put it on its places. And that's it. We have one more question. So actually we are talking about modules and we are talking about a certain preparation, a certain information of the teachers of these classes, like what strategy to choose with this or that class while having the first six months of the fifth year program. Exactly. So the teacher knows his children better. Of course, we did test them, but still the teacher knows better who he really works with, what is his class. But still, of course, we need a seminar where you will be able to, you know, report on it, of the modules, how do we run them, so that they will have this understanding. And if not talking about the very presentation, about its content, and what are the goals, really? Thank you. So, colleagues, are there any other questions? I think that we may start the discussion late when we'll have three other reports, and, you know, just to add the questions to the reporters. Sorry, and may I please ask the question with Olga? So, good day, dear colleagues. Right now, we have analyzed the school program for the fifth year in maths in Belarus, and unfortunately we have found there that at the very beginning that what we do at the second level of the repetition, well, we don't have it. So we may meet the following problem, like the teachers won't have any special time for this repetition of what they had studied before. So the work that you are discussing should be somehow embedded into the process of studying the basic material. So maybe this work would be somehow additional, like, you know, their homework, so this issue should be discussed. So how you can embed it at all into the contents of school programs. I don't know how it works for other colleagues in other countries. May I answer this? So I suppose that in this very situation, 
you know, work on the module contents within the Belarusian program. So that is a separate work to be done. You can't just do it. You can't just look through. And there you start with the new material at once. You introduce the new types of numbers. Yeah, so these are the natural numbers. That is the repetition. Is it the repetition? Yeah, I'm sorry then. Because, you know, we are linguists here. So, yes, you know, that is the repetition. So for the four years, children have been working with this type of numbers. I see. Okay. So, you know, that would be just uh, the reason for us to talk to our teachers of maths. Thank you. So I suppose that, yes, we might be talking about a seminar where we will simply take a look on how these modules might be applied to do the work in coherence with different types of programs so that we won't have an additional time or some extra time to work on so that it should be just a part of the time you, you usually use and it wouldn't be some extra work. So we are talking on the framework then on some limits or some constructs. Yes, of course, but must adapt to the usual school program exactly. So, colleagues, any other questions? Or we might pass to the other reporter. So, I think that we'll be able to discuss it all a bit later. So, we have touched the issue of how do we actually assess the teacher being ready to work, his readiness on how this that teacher works with children, so which philosophy he uses, which practices does he or she use, and I would also ask the next reporter. So did we open the presentation? So I stopped the demonstration. Yeah, exactly. So Alexei, I would like to pass the floor to you. So I would like to see everyone healthy. And I'm glad to see you all here today. And now we start our presentation, like what we have already discussed. I would like to go on discussing for, well, our research for efficient pedagogical practices corresponding to the high SAM level that provide us with high results. And I would like to, to skip the first slides on SAM, which form actually the basis of what the approach is and what considers not only children, but the teachers too. And lately, there's kind of a uh, direction like uh, the um, medicine. And we have never spoken of the research-based pedagogical science. So which are the approaches, methods and tools used. And usually they just, you know, work by intuition. So they have no proof. And like, you know, the idea that the teacher is kind of a creator and each teacher works the way, you know, he wants. So I suppose that we don't live in such era, in such approach anymore. So if we want the results to be better, and we see the progress for each child, 
so that we can see uh, progress in every child. Uh, well, we cannot shoot at random here. We have to find uh, certain statements, I guess, uh, technologies that will tell you if you if you try to if you keep working like this, you will have a bigger chance. Uh, to get a better result. So what we did at some point, many of you could have heard it, we put forward a hypothesis that uh, in order for the second and third level of SEM to get higher results, the teacher has to work in a certain way with a certain content in certain methodological ways. Uh, so if the content is adjusted in a way that, that for example, has a reproductive character, a uh, reproductive mode, and if uh, 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 learning is based uh, uh, in, uh, in a reproductive way, uh, and uh, it's oriented on the a uh, cumulative uh, marking system, cumulative rating, then it will be quite difficult to, to receive the right results. So in order to understand just what pedagogues we have, what they use, we had to take a look at their practice. But to take a look at their practice, we just have not only to look at their practice, but to kind of focus on something through a certain glass, certain lens. And hypothetically, uh, based on the Vygotsky culture historical theory and based on the main constructs of developing education, we uh, suppose the hypothesis uh, that the uh, pedagogical practice that, that can provide us with the uh, higher results is only possible if the kid, the child, uh, has certain tasks uh, in front of him uh, that are put into problems that are uh, formulated as real tasks uh, to have core definitions, if he works with models uh, and he starts uh, probing search activities, uh, if the system of marking is correct. Uh, so if we prove that this, these are the, the elements of modern technologies and creating educational process, then we understand what courses we can talk about with pedagogues, and when hypothetically we uh, identify these elements, uh, we created a matrix of pedagogical activities where we try to uh, break those elements down to particular pedagogical moves, particular pedagogical acts, and try to describe these acts on the level of reproduction of this uh, uh, reproduction of this operation on the level of understanding of operation and on the level uh, of co constructing these pedagogical activities uh, so uh, basically in uh, in uh, on the levels corresponding to those inputs in sam so we tried to describe these uh, pedagogical acts. You can see them. You can see them, the matrix. Mm, this is this is the matrix with the pedagogical levels, the three levels of mastering. So we start to construct uh, particular situative and subjective tasks. All international uh, international research uh, are usually accompanied by a factor analysis with the help of which we try to understand just uh, how we receive uh, one sort of result or another as a result of testing. 
so uh, question uh, uh, so polling uh, uh, surveying is is really not the best mechanism of uh, uh, learning about the results and understanding what which of them were successful or not. So we decided to come up with uh, certain pedagogical tasks uh, with the help of which we'll be able to understand what cultural pedagogical practices there are, there exist today, uh, which particular of them are dominant, which practices are dominant, and in these practices, there's a, a set of pedagogical moves and what moves are successful and what are not, which are totally ignored. Uh, which cannot be used. And these pedagogical moves well, we worked out the situative tasks for, and I will remind you that the first variant of these tasks we, we did based on the mathematical model. But right at the moment when we were doing it, uh, we wanted to compare the results of children's works uh, after the end of elementary school with the results of the teachers that worked with these classes. But if we put forward this kind of hypothesis, this kind of elements, we describe this sort of pedagogical moves. Well, basically then we can work out uh, this kind of tasks on every discipline, be that geography, physics, mathematics, each of them uh, on every subject so that every teacher uh, having particular subject classes while going through the system of these uh, subjective tasks uh, uh, would be able to find the deficit, uh, their deficit, deficits and see it. So this is an example of how it's organized. If we take, for example, uh, discussing problem in the class, we can select the material. We create a particular address for every task. Number one, uh, the, the goal is uh, to see the insufficiency of uh, natural numbers. Uh, so in the fifth, sixth grade, we said that they come to a new uh, uh, we can take some definitions, uh, some kind of tasks that, that are uh, chosen there. There's three three fragments. Uh, for example, we take from uh, from a lesson. We, we, we see how this problem was was put up. And then what's happening? And then, uh, depending on which uh, variant is, uh, three variants of stating the problem, every teacher can select the variant that, that is better for him. Uh, through historical aspects, for example, um, the second one is when teacher looks at the way of doing it. Uh, and the third variant is uh, when the child tries to perform something. For example, we uh, approach the third variant, we come to the third variant, he needs the preparation model that we were talking about. And to remember what he did in the first, first and second grade. And depending on 
depending on what the text were and the formulation of text. Tests, uh, choose the first variant uh, that that you were suggested. Uh, then uh, substantiate what minuses you see in the chosen variant, and then try to describe how you can continue the lesson, whose fragments you select. And then based on these actions, it's a descriptive situation, of course. Uh, we have a comment here where we can uh, describe the, the selection choice and uh, the, the, the uh, suppositions. For example, the choice of uh, number one probably tells us that the teacher in his pedagogical activity doesn't think that he should... Uh, uh state the, the uh task solving up for discussion uh if the teacher chooses uh, variant two uh and then uh the teacher that uh gave uh preference to this uh variant of development he uh, basing it on, on the choice of the, the students, but he takes the role upon himself. And then you can expect that they will move a bit further within uh, towards the understanding of his uh, uh, way of action. And it will be done in the standard situation. So if we chose the third variant, then uh, as a result of this uh, act, uh, the, the chance that the children will uh, will come to the second and third level, it will be more than with the teacher who worked on the first variant. So as a result, so uh, uh, among the mentioned ideas, you choose the one that is probably uh, the one common basic one for the others. In the second variant, the second task, you have to work uh, with this uh, definition in a particular way. And then you have to construct, uh, 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 we have to construct it uh, in a particular task work where somehow how those tasks are organized. Uh, will he be able to understand just which particular definition uh, these tasks are for and then construct a particular work that consists of five tasks so i wonder what, what particular tasks the teacher will select in order to compose the work for this definition or another and as a result uh, the selection of pedagogical moves there's a certain number of points and every teacher has a number of points on every every move every pedagogical move and together for the entire work so here we have uh, the general uh, general table so they receive a certain number of uh, points and based on this points we have a hypothetical situation if teacher gets this much then uh, he will not uh, take the main points and then then they are limited by the first reproductive level so based on this uh, data we in fact restore their practice what we do we describe their practice and that's uh, also given that I didn't open the right presentation. For all these pedagogues, kind of, we can, we can kind of uh, put them down in four groups. First is a formal way group of pedagogues that that been uh, using modern techniques, not always. Uh, and but episodical and the, the third group is uh, is those that uh, are doing reflection and themselves will uh, 
Nepal be able to do it. And then uh, the fourth group is those working within the culture level of development. So uh, based on this data, we can choose different profiles of teachers. And, and we'll talk about particular subjective acts and what particular teachers moves are uh, not good and what are good, what he can do very well and on which level. So we can be building various, uh, 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 various uh, roses of the wind. And uh, when we uh, did this uh, uh, work with the teachers, uh, we asked them to say, uh, why you need these tasks. Uh, and here I will give you two examples. Uh, one particular feedback. Uh, it Those were interesting tasks. Some of them were really interesting tasks. Uh, so you can tell about teacher quite a lot. I know if he will think through every task, does he think well, about the selection of tests, the theory in the, in the program and uh, how well the teacher can uh, deal uh, with uh, tasks, how he can handle, he can uh, use different levels of evaluation. Thank you for the possibility of seeing uh, your uh, well, limits of not knowing. So, dear colleagues, at the end, the conclusion is that for today, uh, we describe the model pedagogical practice uh, that is consists of a number of pedagogical actions. These levels are described on three levels of uh, their use. And then, from my point of view, that there's uh, particular pedagogical tasks uh, and, and the next stage from my point of view is that uh, we so far haven't managed to uh, prove we need uh, a lot of uh, children that this model of pedagogical practice gives a different level in education and i would like to mention one tendency that as of today a lot of people started uh, dealing with the issue of soft skills, the universal competence of the 21st century, moving further and further away from the subject um, composition. And I have a feeling that the SM model uh, plus the pedagogical diagnostics uh, and description of pedagogical practices can turn uh, us, our faces towards uh, the fact that the competences is knowledge that uh, is turned into means. So if we, if we don't change the approach to constructing the content and we continue uh, dancing with the uh, uh, drums uh, and we do that uh, outside uh, the, the uh, competitive disciplines, the educational disciplines uh, orient on the practical sphere of life. Uh, we have uh, three, uh, uh, three uh, uh, parts here, algebra, geometry, and real mathematics in our educational system. So the, the real mathematics, the kid goes uh, to the store uh, with 100 rubles and he buys, buys salami and has to count what the change should be. Uh, if we understand the uh, competitive approach like this, then very soon the results will be lower than they are. Status. Uh, so the idea of increasing the status and technologies of education that is aimed at uh, understanding of the educational 
material. Well, I think that that's where we should be moving. And uh, uh, we are trying to uh, improve this. We're trying to understand this. Um, and we want to include that in, 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 in our scope of work, including the humanitarians as well. Well, including the mathematical cycle as well. Thank you, Alexei Borisovich. Colleagues, do you have any questions? Comments? Alexei Borisovich, можно have a question? Alexei Borisovich, do I have a question? Mm. What probes uh, did we do to do the same for humanitarians? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't heard very well. Were there any attempts uh, to do to, to start doing it for humanitarians? Yes, history in history. We, and what problems did did you deal with on the way? It's on the level of understanding that the, the problems appeared, key definitions. So it's uh, what Sam uh, has to deal with, right? Uh, let's see like this, because in this model pedagogical practice, it consists of uh, particular, particular moves particular pedagogical acts and I have the hypothesis that uh, perhaps for different uh, uh, disciplines uh, the number of these uh, acts can be different it 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 does have to be a complete set for all of them so if it's like this uh, we have to understand for example I had this uh, magister student who did uh, magistrate on uh, uh, art, uh, Olga Raskin, and, we, and even on this we can find a uh, certain number uh, visual arts and a certain number of tasks that that are oriented in the same ideology. I seen these tasks and yes, the attempts there. Yeah. And she didn't say that she did it specifically for Sam, but Piotr Gennadievich, uh, I, I liked your talk. Uh, there's a very interesting idea there. Yeah, very interesting idea that you said that, uh, that we can uh, take usual tests, beginning from a pair, and try to relay, relay it for three levels to look what tasks uh, there are, third level, to, so can I turn it to Sam. So with the visual art, we can recombine it, what tasks, we have on different levels and what kid possibi possibilities there are with a kid. So we can try. So we shouldn't do it if we cannot choose this uh, key things in history, then we'll not take history and, or, or uh, uh, law or economy will not take. Well, we should try different disciplines and try to see what happens with different elements and, and fragments of these pedagogical actions. But this situation increase kind of this situation and say, uh, pedagogues, friends, if if we do, uh, if we emphasize this, this and this, then if we learn to put the problem from here to here to uh, remove the problem, if you start uh, working, you know, drawing more uh, or kind of putting new models, create new models, then it's already good. Uh, and if you if you start doing in such a way that children will try to find different solutions to this problem, if we uh, if we pedal it all the time and we try to make accent put accent on this, emphasize this, 
uh, and if we provide them with a test, then, then it's what the standards in Russia require so that it would be done. Uh, why do they need uh, activities at the classes if the tasks are uh, not asking for that? And then there is no uh, requirements uh, over that. I have a question about the previous previous uh, talk on the windrows there's there's a conclusion that the teachers that whose uh, rows of wings has a complicated shape then they will they, they, they can take those models not so effectively. It's a simple task. Uh, does your uh, decision on the pedagogical practices, um, is it the diagnosis that uh, it will be difficult for, for these pedagogues with the uh, models? with the models that, 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 that are catching up? Or is there a model uh, that we listened to the previous previous talk? Uh, or do we need a special kind of diagnosis in this case? Well, I'll start from afar, but I'll be short. I always uh, try to acquire this position if the teacher takes up a program, a Gorbov program, uh, his uh, uh, methodological brochure, and from start to finish, uh, be that uh, move left or right, you get fired, you get killed. Uh, so you cannot get out of line. And then what? What you were thinking about, what you were, what you wanted, it will really happen. There's all these programs uh, of uh, developmental education. Uh, uh, they they kind of develop the idea so that if you move it that way, you will come to logical end. So I didn't see the variant that Sergei Fyodorovich provided with the model, but there will be tasks constructed there that whether you want it or not, it's important for the teacher to start doing it. And so that he will take it from the very first one and come to the end. So if he moves all the way to the end, and if he performs all the tasks that are uh, designed by the model authors, then the problem will disappear. If we're teaching, if we are uh, uh, trying to instruct uh, parents, uh, teachers to do something, bring them back to Soviet pedagogy, uh, whether you think or not, Boratino will happen. So I'm not uh, afraid so much that something may not happen simply because uh, the model content uh, will be uh, kind of uh, making teacher closer to the result. And colleagues may not agree with me, but Mm. The colleague even told us so well that we should put the model where uh, the model can be moved through. And he, it must be done in such a way that even outside the school, if we take, because uh, every next task uh, takes the child out to a particular level. And there is a particular uh, iron logic there, not just a set of particular tasks. So as I understand, uh, 
from the logic of developing education. So basically, uh, as I understand in this situation, the teacher is a secondary thing here. Uh, when we were creating the new practice program, we thought that the teachers will have the other content. So they will take the traditional approach and our goal is to show that if you sit in this traditional uh, ways of work, nothing will happen, nothing will work, so nothing will change. So if you would like to get a result, you must take the contents, the technologies, and if we had ahead the info that the teachers that you know use the program of the uh, developing education do get the high SEM results then usual traditional gymnasiums and lyceums or professional lyceums and gymnasiums thus would allow us to prove that such a uh, practice is optimal for the uh, child's development and education. So thank you very much. So considering our work, I suppose that we should put aside uh, all our comments and questions. So please, you are welcome with the next presentation. Thank you very much. So, as Alexei is close, I don't share his optimistic view. And while using the SEM metaphor, I would say, and you know, while operating some of the ideas of Turchininova, overseeing the teacher's developing process, there are three levels of professionalism for teacher. The first one is formal, when the teacher takes just external forms. The second is when you take the contents. And the third one is quite functional, that's when you work with children. So actually you take uh, any practice book or any book and really use it, you can't do it if you are a teacher who doesn't understand what's a kid and how to work with a child. So when a teacher does understand what are the child's actions, he doesn't work with contents, he works with child's actions. So if he takes a good content, then he can develop the actions. But if he takes the traditional contents, then, you know, it doesn't work in full scope and percentage. But, you know, I don't know the last experience of the of Alexei because he's working offline and online a lot. So maybe my optimism will grow thanks to him. So I'm saying a few words on the technology. Uh, so that is kind of a tool. Uh, when we try to help the teacher, how, you know, to uh, use other technologies, including SEM. So what is the technological coach? First, of course, we ask, is it a methodology specialist? No, that is a technology coach. So I would like, you know, um, use the schemas. It's kind of a playing trainer playing coach. It's a person who leads the lessons, who teaches children, and he has quite a large spectrum of um, capacities and competences. That's, we have a master's degree where we teach them to enlarge them. And he holds trainings for teachers. Like you can see a deficit for a teacher, considering the activity approach. It might help you to see this deficit and it might help you how to think of a training exercise that would easily and quickly fulfill this need. Well, not easily and not quickly, but of course it's not years of skills achieving. That's like 15 or one hour long um, seminars. He might act as a um, 
specialist for SAM to assess the results of her teacher. So he works as a technologist as far as he can work and he can project with the uh, teachers like the SAM, like purposes and goals. So he doesn't create a test a series, a valid one, but he develops the goals on which you might create a development program and some of the testing methods where a teacher always, or the teacher always lacks. So you don't just stop within one test in a year or four years, so you test it regularly. You must always hold the situation under control. So he acts like an analyst because you might also use the individual um, roadmaps as a tutor for a teacher and he can also be a moderator a facilitator so you connect a teacher with professionals with supervisors so that is just the spectrum the range of the skills he has so that is a technological coach where does he work in an uh, um, organization in an educational organization so that is the basic schema so he has the master's degree he works at school he has lessons and he has additional competences so he helps to promote teachers who want and who can have this promotion. So that's a basic scheme with which we work. So that is the model of actions, and I will not speak about it a lot, because the major idea is quite simple. That's quite a long-term practice of our work with teachers, with Alexei, and with some other colleagues, and it showed that like in traditional uh, education, 10 or 15 percent of students who do work well, no matter how you work with them. And so uh, the same is for the uh, teachers. Uh, who, you know, get to this developing education, no matter how we teach them. And considering the fact that we would always like to be more efficient, I would say that the coach uh, changes the situation dramatically. The supervisor works with the trainer, the trainer works with the teacher, the way the teacher of a development education works with children. So we try to... Uh, enlarge the scope of this activity as far as the teacher the student works with a program and the teacher works with the student's actions so the student's action uh, can't be defined by the terms like the subjects so actually we're trying to move to it. But that is the idea of, you know, expanding it at all levels of work differs our approach from what is done by methodology specialists. So actually, that is the last slide I would like to show. That is the general plan for a lesson with the inner diagnostics where we can apply various tools like SAM, so the teacher actually receives that actually the most important thing of the lesson is the regular feedback. And that doesn't mean that the teacher should be too strict. He can, you know, set them free for quite a long period of time, but within it, he must see the situation and understand the situation. That is the simplest uh, schema. So actually, uh, this question mark may be pushed into every place. So that is the most abstract um, plan that shows that the child has come to a lesson with certain skills. So he has the, uh, the goal to achieve, so he needs some disruptive actions to be done. And so you have started previously to work on these skills to catalyze the 
passage from the to pass to the new solution finding methods so if children might do that that means that they keep in the same topic they are involved into the solution finding and here we see the new layers and the fix the models and the schemas for new subject components that allow to start the new iteration with new disruption goal. So it might be placed variously and we may check if children are ready for the next step. We may understand if they have the necessary meta skills so that they would be catalyzers and then they would uh, actually have the group forms of job without which it's quite complicated for them to to get through so SEM allows us to see it and to see if something's happening if there is something growing and that's it i would say and so our last slide is like in which condition are we now so that is the number of cities in various regions of Russia. That is the master's degree program that we have. It is our second year. And we have, you know, the conference for the coaches. So these are the articles that our masters write. And uh, so that is just the further route for the further development of this idea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, dear colleagues, I would like to start the discussion. So, we are ready to ask the questions. So, as we have all the time left. So, in this sense, we are working quite dense. And we have three minutes, you know. Good afternoon, esteemed colleagues. I wanted to ask you the question. I think that this is for Artyom. So as far as the topic of our today's masterclass or workshop is quite clear, I would like to find out so what we have heard. How can we actually spread it? And considering what Peter has said, I would like to ask how approbated this program is, if it's approbated at all, and what Alexei said, Vorons of One, I mean, forgot, sorry, I forgot your unique name. So I have seen the presentation and we have been discussing the approbation. So what is methodology for, what is the solution? We have seen three of them. So uh, for me, because I haven't been uh, teaching, that's quite complicated for me. So if teachers need to be studied, that means that you must create national coaches because without it, the spreading of this information is impossible. So that's my opinion. What do you think about it? So that we could keep working on it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your question, Yelena. I would also like that to read. I would say that the ideas that have been spread, they have been developed by colleagues for quite a long period of time. And what we think it to be is that these ideas are the next step for the further development of SEM and the use of the methodology potential. And of course, in Russian schools, we are planning to create experimental platforms and actually support it so that we could in practice see how these ideas allow us to make better the basic educational level and to enlarge actually the efficiency of the SEM testing. And in this sense, we think 
it to be efficient and necessary. So that is kind of the recommendation on the uh, actions of the teachers and of the uh, students. We have been discussing the 10 last years and this idea of how to join this uh, work, the research work, and that is the joint work as, I, as far as I see it, this module uh, that was presented, that is the framework, and that's kind of a cacus that can be applied in a particular situation and school programs must be different. And uh, actually it might change and it might be different from what we have. And each module must be actually structured for each and tuned for each teacher. So that is a proposition to have a joint research job done and a joint uh, use of our read program on integration of these methods. Here I would call them of the quality growth and the application of SEM technology and its spreading. That's how I would answer to Red, and it's quite evident that what we need is our work with um, technologists, and of course, that's quite a huge component of the pre qualification and re qualification, and we are ready to support that. And considering the read three. Our program, we would support all these initiatives because you know we are very positive about it and we see some potential in it. Yeah, thank you so much. I see. May I add a couple of words? There's something I would like to add that during our cooperation, I, you know, felt quite uncomfortable because. Sometimes we come as teachers and we teach someone. And like, you know, and I said, I come to Armenia and there is a doctor of sciences and he is, calls himself my student. You know, that's me who studies from him. I study from him and I thought that all this cooperation must be the um, one of going forward together because your notes are really important and we must study them because you was speaking Zinap, about the percentage criteria it's quite debatable and questionable and i agree with you that's an open question that should be somehow solved and that's it and i have been looking at the cooperation possibility on the other basis of the movement forward to our common directions. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to add that at the same time, the work with the support of the SEM based products, considering the read treat, we propose a 100% open colleagues on holding of this or that research on the interdisciplinary research that also imply the quality assessment and the retreat program allows us to implement the joint programs that are more free considering the frames than it used to be the previous years. So if we have any propositions on the realization of this or that initiatives, please, you are welcome. And we'll find how we should organize this cooperation and we will support most of them. And of course, we would also like to invite uh, people to join our research program considering this project. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. So, Arsene, yes, I would like to mention a couple of words. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. And again, it was really nice to meet you. 
I would like to shortly speak on reports. Considering the first report, considering the modules, I would like to say, well, you know, I expected and it sounded that it's kind of a uh, direction on the application of the results of SEM. And I thought that the module will be in coherence with the results in like a specific school and then they showed how to do it. So the results shown by the students to what I thought is that the module would depend on the results. So if there are some weak points, then you just work on it and if something is well to say the kids that they are working well. So I thought that the module would depend on the real results. But, you know, I think that I understood it not really well. And if we are talking about the modules, then the module is kind of a methodology of SEM. So that is the lectures. These are lectures. Lectures and goals. So without the results of students. So actually, I would like to see this connection that is considering the module. Considering the Voronsov, I also loved, I always loved the methodology of testing uh, by Voronsov. I always liked it. And I always had the feeling of something not being accomplished. So that might also be good. So there are no real borders. It's not all over and there are things to move forward to. So considering it, there was one thing that made me feel uncomfortable or anxious. And I don't know how to react. So within this methodology, the conclusions and uh, reduced like recommendations. And what I think is that somewhere in the middle of the research, you will need the numbers. And that means that we'll have a solution that we wouldn't work with scales, with numbers, with notes. And I think that uh, we will work without them, without the statistics, but it would be quite complicated to work without them, and even taking into consideration what Piotr said at the very beginning, that of course, within huge layers, it doesn't matter who is more advanced, but it depends in which uh, layer you are. So you should have this technique or method of where to put it. So without real numbers, without real test results, I can't really imagine it. So if we are talking about the better and the bigger number of teachers who have passed the education, so we need statistics. And if we're talking about statistics, that means that we need percentages, numbers, and we can't do without it. And the third thing, so maybe, yeah, I think I haven't spoken for quite long enough, but considering the cooperation that Artyom mentioned and considering SEM, we were talking with Artyom, there is one thing that actually interests me. So that is SEM in Russian. Considering Armenia, I would also like to say whether this test might be adapted so that Russian won't be as native one, but as a foreign one, considering us, for example, and that is the first direction of cooperation to make the Russian test, the SAM test for our countries for which Russian is quite foreign. And secondly, to make a test on native language so that Russian, so that it wouldn't be a transition from Russian to Armenian translation, but a test on 
not an Armenian, I mean, but Russian as native one. Like someone will work in Kyrgyz language, the other one as a Kazakh one, and then we adapt it so that it would be a test for a native language, mother tongue. So you can actually have several directions here. Thank you. I would like just to say a couple of words. Yeah, I don't have if we have any limitations, so if we are ready to talk, of course we will do that. So um, the questions raised are not quite short, so we need the discourse here. So I think that we will be talking about a certain meeting where we can, you know, go into detail. As far as today, we are limited, and I understand it. Yes, of course, we will plan that, because, you know, I would, I think that we have eager, that means that there are certain limits. Yeah, you know, we started discussing some issues, but we never went on for the discussion on the precision. We have something like four minutes. You know, I'm glad that I have been working with statistics. But for school, an example here is the one in car production. So they have three points, like 19, 130, and how close the arrow is to this, so that limit. So we should have the same, you know, indices for school. So which are the limits there? Is it the same as uh, we have the degrees in medicine or not? So we need our own precision rate. So that's the question that should be asked by, the, by those who do the statistics. So that's the same for the Olympics. So we should compromise here. And uh, of course, we will have our own seminar dedicated to it. So today we just had an introductory part. So considering it, I would say that that is important, considering the tests for the uh, mother tongues. But you know, we need quite serious specialists in Armenian language. We have such specialists. Then, you know, we must talk with Sokolova, with Miss Sokolova, of course, and plus, yes, and some other people, of course, I get it. So colleagues, unfortunately, we are quite limited and we must finalize our discussion. I would like to thank all the participants who managed to join us, who found the possibility to speak up today. And we are planning to work in autumn, in our autumn cycle, in the winter. And we will offer the format for the further communication so that we would be in touch and that we will actually work and we will be able to discuss what can be done and we will discuss that in detail without, you know, the limits of our symposium. So I would like to once again thank you all for your participation in our round table.